We're going to, first of all, uh, just get into the Christmas story real quickly. And um, I actually do this in a different way every year, but in the same way every year, because I bring this Bible. Um, this Bible here uh, belonged to my mom's dad, okay? So my paternal grandfather, we called him Pop. And um, this is a very special Bible for a number of reasons, but one reason is this is the Christmas story. Okay, uh, it, this page came out a long time ago uh, because pretty much this Bible opens automatically to this story. Um, I, I can't say that I often, uh, my, you know, my memories of my, of my grandfather, my pop, uh, were, are extremely positive, had an amazing time with him, uh, just a, a great and loving uh, situation there and always did that. But I, I wouldn't say that he was uh, a Bible scholar in that traditional sense. I mean, he wasn't a guy who was always, you know, pouring over the scriptures or things like that. Um, but he was a guy who definitely lived him out in my life. He was a guy that I uh, learned a lot about life and love from him. But one of the things that he did every year at Christmas, whenever we were there, is he would read Luke 2 from here. So again, the Bible would just kind of like plop open to it. And I, you know, I'm not here to say whether he did or didn't know other verses. He probably did. But this one you can see was pretty well worn. So this has the special travel version um, that if I ever <laughs> like have to travel light, I can say, well, you know, would that when they talk about desert island scriptures or something that if you had to be on the, you know, on a desert island with one book or one page of one book or something like that, I guess maybe I could take this one with me and it would be easy. But anyway, this is uh, going to be read out of the King James Version, but uh, that makes it all the more Christmassy. So here we go. Um, I'm going to read it through, and then I got just some very simple comments to make on it that I think will be helpful um, to our lives as we live them out today. So um, chapter 2 of Luke, it says, it, And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria, and of Syria, I'm sorry. And all went to be taxed, every one to his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them and the glory of the Lord shone round them and they were sore afraid." And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And verse 12 says, And this shall be a sign to you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace goodwill toward men, and it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them in heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord has made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in the manger, and when they had seen it, they made known abroad the things that were told them concerning this child and all that they heard all that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds but mary kept all these things and pondered to pondered them in her heart now again thinking about that i'll, I'll put this carefully over here and uh I just want to share a few thoughts out of that familiar story with you, which is um, that I titled this, as you can see, A Very Merry Christmas. Uh, 
And the reason I did that is because I think, um, you know, certainly this story has been looked at from many different angles, but I think sometimes looking at a story from a certain person's angle in it uh, is a very helpful thing. And I think about Mary for a moment, you know, she has been both probably over-revered and under-revered, if I could put it that way. You know, there are people who have tried to put her on too much of a pedestal, um, you know, and, and then uh, that can be a mistake. But there's also people who, because they don't want to do that, they let the pendulum swing so far the other way that they're kind of like, well, let's just ignore her. She doesn't really matter. There's nothing that's here, nothing to learn here uh, from Mary, you know. And so I think about this. Um, I'm, I'm hoping in a way that this could be for some of us a very merry Christmas. And what I mean by that is she was just a human, right? There was a divine baby born that, that day, uh, but he wasn't born to anything other than just a humble little couple there from a little bitty town in the middle of nowhere. And Nazareth, as they came from, as they came from one small town to another small town, even yet today, Bethlehem is not a big place, but Nazareth is even smaller. It has only one claim to fame at all, uh, which is Jesus. That's it. Otherwise, it would be a forgotten, completely ignored place on the planet. They would have been forgotten this. Mary and Joseph would have been a couple of nobodies. And so uh, in the middle of nowhere. And I think this is really important because, again, even when Jesus came on the scene, some of the people who later followed him said, could anything good come from Nazareth? I mean, it was truly a despised and forgotten place. And so I think that's a great thing to think on, first of all, is that most of the world lives in complete and utter obscurity. And you know what? One of the messages that comes to each one of you, if you haven't heard it yet, is that your life has to be great. Your life has to be huge. Your life has to be amazing. Your life should be, you know, notable to all. You should be a person who is, you know, famous and, and known and leaves a legacy and does all these things. And you go, well, that's partially true, maybe on some level. But I think that can be a tremendous weight to bear because, again, most of humanity comes and goes from the scene with barely being seen, barely being heard, barely being known, and yet mattering to the people who are around them when I think about that. And so when I think about it, again, a, a very merry Christmas, she was notable, Mary, only because her story intertwined with Jesus. If it hadn't, we wouldn't know her. We wouldn't care. And so the first thought that I wrote down is that for their life, it was taxing. Okay, that's the first thought I want you to think about. Did you know that life will be taxing? Um, when you looked at, at what was going on there, right, why did they have to go from one place to another? They were semi-happy in Nazareth. I mean, remember, she was pregnant nine months all the way. Great, as the Bible puts it, great, great big. And so the last thing on earth she wanted to do on earth was go on a 90-mile trek in her ninth month. I mean, because remember, if I had told Lynn, we're going to get in the car and drive across a bumpy road for 90 miles, she wouldn't have been saying, great. <laughs> she would have been saying, no, 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 no. But this was a 90-mile walk, okay, between these two places. We forget that sometimes. So what is it to have a very Merry Christmas? Well, sometimes, again, the pressure is to have the perfect Christmas. Everything's great. Everything's wonderful. How's your life? Wonderful. How's your family? Hallelujah, beautiful. Everything's great. And you go, well, if you'd ask Mary, how are things? You're great. <laughs> Pregnant. Well, it's not so great. We got we to gotta go 90 miles. Why? Because Caesar, who is a Caesar, he's going to seize stuff if he can. He wants to get taxes from poor people like Mary and Joseph, he's going to count them, not because he thinks they count, but because he wants to count how much they owe him. You think about this, life can be pretty taxing. Life can be pretty difficult. And this is a time of year where, again, people start to think about all that stuff, you know, and there's tax bills and, and reductions and who's getting and who's not and all that sort of thing. And you realize this has been going on a long time. But life was taxing for these people. 
And so, you know what? I think one of the things it does is it frees you, it frees me to have a very merry Christmas and be merry, you know, M-E-R-R-Y, but also remember that life is difficult and that's okay. That if, if maybe Christmas is a trip you don't want to take or the road is pretty rocky or frankly, you're just not really into it or something like that, you go, you know what? That's okay. Maybe Mary was, dare I say, a little grumpy along the way. Maybe Joseph was a little grumbly when he got the news. What do you mean? Uh, oh, great timing. What? Oh yeah, let's let's definitely do this. Because again, remember, they don't know for sure, historians, whether this was the time of year. I can pretty much tell you the one day it wasn't was this day, right? I don't mean to bum anyone out, but it probably wasn't here. But this is what I can tell you. Living in those days, um, to make a quick trip like this, 90 miles, and it was mountainous, it was difficult, well, it would have been taxing. And on the other end of it, what do you get to do? Pay your taxes. Yay. You know, is anyone really excited about that? I, I can't even stay here and be counted. And, and Nope, got to go back to your hometown so we make sure we get it right. So that was the reason they were in Bethlehem. So again, just a very Merry Christmas to you. <laughs> you know, if you think about that, maybe there's some challenges in your life. The second thought that I wrote down was it was lonely. It was lonely. And I think about this and you know what? This is a time of year where, where people have both the best and the worst of some thoughts. See, I think about it this way. I will get to spend time with family this Christmas. I will also get to spend time not with family this Christmas. No matter what, there are people who both you are with and you are not with, you know? If the stream by some miracle is still working, hi mom, I'm sorry I'm not there for Christmas. I'm never there for Christmas. Have you noticed that? Uh, but I'm, I'm trying, you know, but with different times of year. But guess what? I just told you this really isn't Christmas anyway. Um, so, you know, whatever day we're with, we'll make it Christmas. You know, we'll figure that out. But there's people who have uh, departed the earth that I miss. There's people who I can't be with them till I'm with Jesus. So I don't get to see them right now. But it can be lonely. And I don't know if you guys noticed the loneliness of this story. But to me, it's a tremendously lonely story. Do you think when Mary was thinking as a young child, and she was still a young child even when this happened, right? But when she was really little, do you think she was thinking, you know what I want for my first baby? I want to be completely alone. I want to be uh, away from all of my hometown friends. Because remember, it was Joseph's hometown that they went to. They were living over in Nazareth. Why were they living over there? Where well, part of it was there was a shame to their game in some people's mind. There were people who thought she had done and they had done something that was dishonorable. Because in their culture, for them to have a baby on the way before they were all the way to the altar was quite a big deal. It said she was his espoused wife. That was pre-marriage for them. That was a, uh, you know, a time before marriage. And so when you think about this, you go, hmm, Remember, the Bible teaches that she was not Joseph's or husband, or she was not Joseph's wife yet, and Jesus was not Joseph's baby. Well, you know, people believed it then like they believe it now. A virgin birth? Yeah. Okay, Mary. Sure. And so this was a very lonely time in her life. She was somewhere else than she wanted to be in some ways. And she was thought of differently in her day than she might be in ours, right? And again, when I think about that, sometimes people's lives are looked at different in the moment than they are later. And I think that's an important thing to think on too. See, again, when you think about this, um, life was not uh, surrounded by the people that she might have wanted to be surrounded by. She had Elizabeth in her life, but Elizabeth wasn't there in Bethlehem. Um, you, she had lots of people who would have, it would have been great to have their, just their nearness to her, but they weren't there during this time. And it was, again, all because of this decree of Caesar. So he not only was taking their money, but he was taking their peace in some ways, taking it from them, and they were, had to be somewhere they didn't choose to be. And so it was lonely. I think about this. I don't know if you've ever been lonely in a crowd, but it's possible to do that, right? 
this is a time of year that a lot of people get sad. So I try to think about it again, not putting pressure on people to have the perfect Christmas, whatever that is. Maybe the perfect Christmas, a very merry Christmas, is to have a certain melancholy to it. Again, I'm not trying to remove the joy out of life. I'm trying to balance it as it really does, which is one of the most sorrowful things. The Bible even says it. The most sorrowful thing is to be among people who have joy when you don't have it or you don't share it. That there there can be that thing where everyone's you know, slapping each other on the back and may old acquaintance be forgot and all this. And you're like, but they, my old acquaintances have forgot, right? And you, and you start looking at that and you go, well, what is it that was near? Well, I can tell you what was near to her. There was a joy that was coming into her life. But again, it was in the midst of a very lonely time. I think about this in my life. The loneliest Christmas I think I ever had was in the midst of a massive crowd. I was um, back in college, and I was doing a study abroad. Uh, I happened to be in, living in London, but I took a trip all throughout Europe, and it happened to be during Christmas break. So I wasn't near my, my family or anyone I knew. Well, I had gone overseas with a, a best friend, a guy that I grew up with named Lewis, who still lives in London or in the, in the UK now. And he, um, he got very, very sick. We were going to have this trip that we were going to go all through Europe together, and you know, see all these great spots. But on the very first night, we went from London to Paris on that trip, and he got just deathly ill. And he did the noble thing, which is he said, go on without me, and I did, um, <laughs> because I'm ignoble. Uh, no, but he, he really did, we agreed, hey, you know what? Um, he's not gonna be able to take the trip, but we thought about this so long, I gotta do it. But I, I had a great and absolutely wonderful time in different places. By myself. I, I can be by alone without being lonely. So can you. It's possible to be alone and be overjoyed. But there's certain moments where even in a crowd, even a loner like me felt pretty lonely. Why? Because I was in St. Peter's Basilica, which is in the middle of the Vatican in Rome. I was in Rome on Christmas night. And I mean, Packed with people. It was a big party. Even the Pope was there. Okay, it was a big party. And I come out to that and I look around and I'm completely by myself. I was like in a world apart from everyone I knew. I couldn't, everyone around me is speaking different languages. It was like the bar scene of Star Wars, you know? And it was like, boom, 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 boom. And I just no, I'm like, anyone English? English? Um, no. Um, so I, 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 they did all the things and, and the blessings and, and all that stuff, and I saw it all, and, and people all overjoyed and stuff, and I went back to a hostel, feeling kind of hostile, <laughs> you know, a youth hostel. I was like, man, nobody cares. I could, I could fall off the earth right now, and it doesn't matter. And here I was on Christmas Eve in the most romantic of Rome, you know, roaming the world, and just felt completely alone. So I think about that and I go, you know, have yourself a Merry Christmas. Well, you know what? If, if you're with folks and you're having a great time, have a great time. But if you're not, know that you'll have great times. Um, because I think about that again. I, I went on to have amazing times, but that was a low point. But never make a decision in a low point that doesn't give you the capacity to continue to enjoy the next points. See, I think about that with them. Again, they could have said no room at the end, no room at the end. No room at the end. Well, what's the point of all this? And all that kind of, they could have lost it right there. But you know what? They kept looking and it was probably pretty lonely out there. It's like just me and the animals. Just me and the animals. Where, where's the Lamaze classes and all that stuff? Where's the, the midwife? Uh, Joseph, you pretty good with all this? Joseph like, I don't know nothing about birth and no babies. Um, you know, and, and you think about this. That's pretty lonely. I, I bet we think about Mary, right? Mary was definitely having quite a Christmas that night. But I think about Joseph, too. I'd be scared to death. I was scared to death, surrounded by all the medical miracles and modern conveniences. Do you understand? They almost, Lynn knows, the medical teams, each of the birth of our babies, probably spent more time with me than they did with her. Because I was always the one who looked like it was about, sir, are you about to pass out? Hey, I need a little oxygen here. Can I get, whoo! You know, how are you taking it? I'm just barely hanging in there, you know. But, but I, I think of Joseph and I go, oh, my.
my goodness, can you imagine? In that culture, the guys didn't know this. They didn't know anything about it. And so Mary was truly alone, but so was Joseph, but they weren't truly alone. So again, I think about that, it was lonely. And then I leave this one for you to think on, and, and there are four of these, so don't worry. There's three that are kind of one way and one that's the best one, you know, but scary. It was scary. You think about this, it's just plain scary. Um, you know what I thought was scary? Uh, shepherds that you don't know suddenly showing up in the barn when you've just had your first baby. Uh, that's pretty scary. Again, shepherds were not considered the, the greatest people in that day. I mean, they were. That, this was a job you went to when you had a record and you couldn't get a job, you would go be a shepherd, right? And, and so we think of it today and we're like, oh, the Psalms about the shepherds and shepherds, it's such a great thing. Not in that day. They're, they could not even testify in a court of law because they said they're a bunch of lying, cheating shepherds. I mean, why would I... Listen to what they say. So here these guys show up and you say, well, wait a minute. It was wise men who came and they brought gifts and stuff. That was two years later. So in this moment, who showed up the night of the birth? A bunch of crazy guys talking about seeing angels that you've never met before. <laughs> We're on the field and woo and hark the herald angels and, and blah, 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 blah. And you're like, yeah, um, she's going to need some sleep. Um, and, and I think about that. That would have been really scary to me to have a bunch of strangers show up next to the manger and go, ooh, stranger things for sure um, for these guys. And they're ranting and raving about things that they've seen. And this is why I think about the last one, because I go, it was great. It was great. I mean, when you think about this, it was taxing. It was lonely. It was scary. And it was great. Because it says she was great with child, but it was a great child she was with, right? And so when you think about this, it has had amazing implications ever since. So if you're going through something taxing, you're going through something lonely, you're going through something maybe a little scary, well, it may not be the birth of Jesus in your life, but it can certainly be the life of Jesus in your life that can be great in the midst of all of this. Because, you know, it says that they went with great joy. The shepherds left different. <laughs> they went out and said, this is amazing. And their lives were different. However their lives were before, they were different after. Joseph was scared that night, I'm sure. But guess what? He, he made it through and they made it through. And, and one night, he didn't have to pay for the hotel. Um, that's good. Um, you know, you, you think about that. There was, there was no doctor bill because uh, there was no doctor. So, so there's an upside, right? <laughs> hey, this is great. Because I remember this. Any discussion with somebody in the hospital when the kids were being born was a consultation and was charged accordingly. I, I, we seriously got bills for a long time after. I'm like, 500 bucks. The guy said hi to me in the hall. Um, <laughs> that was a very expensive hi in the hall. Uh, how are you doing? Uh, everything's fine. Okay, consultation. And I'm like, hmm, 500 bucks. Wow. But I wrote this down, and this, again, is a short message, but I hope it'll have some lasting impact, which is we are the people like Mary of wandering feet and pondering heart. That's what I wrote down, wandering feet, pondering heart. If I could wish anything for us this coming year, it's that our feet would do a little wandering. And I don't mean even necessarily geographically, but just, <laughs> you know, there was wonder in their wander, right? They did all this stuff and they're like, I hate this. I don't know why I'm going here. Why is this happening? And all that kind of stuff. And I am very much that way. Anyone who's been around me knows I'm always like, why is this happening? Why is it going this way? And then it goes that way and I go, <gasps> wonder. <gasps> This is amazing, you know, and, and, and our life has been a, one of wandering and wondering, but pondering. See, I love it because she ponders it in her heart. I think I looked up that word. It's an amazing word. It basically saying, it says to lay two things aside of each other, two things parallel. That's what the Greek word literally means when it says she pondered them in her heart. What it means is she paralleled things and went, yeah, but this here, if you lay it alongside this, Wow, it's not a mistake. 
it's it's actually the mission we're on. I mean, like for example, the taxing. You go, this is so annoying, and then it says the baby will be born in Bethlehem. Well, if I ponder that in my heart, I lay it aside and go, oh, we had to be in Bethlehem, didn't we? Oh yeah. It it, it was that something didn't make sense in the moment, but it made sense in the reflection of that moment. And see, I think about that. We, I am I'm the biggest offender these days that it's very hard for me to ponder anything in my head or my heart for that matter because there's just so much going on. There's just so much all the time, right? But to ponder something is to reflect on it like a pond, right? A pond of water is just a little still thing. It's not a raging river of craziness. It, to ponder, it's just a little little still water, little pond there, and to think on things like that. So again, I think of it this way. I, I would hope for you, I would wish for you a very merry Christmas and a new year full of <laughs> wandering feet and a pondering heart, you know, and to, and to say, it, it, maybe I'm going to go somewhere that I don't want to go. Maybe I'm going to do something I don't want to do. Maybe I, I feel really lonely right now and and you go okay that's kind of scary but can we trust God to make it great because he does he does these things all the time and so I'm leaving you one little present Um, you know hopefully I get you other presents and stuff but this is the present is kind of a slide right which is this last slide here which is I'm hoping you'll have a little Christmas, <laughs> a merry little Christmas. A lot of people want a big Christmas and a big life. You know what? I'm actually enjoying a little life. I actually do. I think it's okay to have a little life. It's okay to have a little life. doesn't mean it doesn't matter. Um, the other day, uh, again, I, I say all of our kids have profoundly, profoundly taught me Um, If I have any wisdom, it's not that they got it from me, it's that I got it from them, and I just paid attention. But Chris, the other day, we went to the the, uh, ALF, you know, the assisted living facility, the old folks home, and sang some songs and stuff. And and on the way out, Carissa told me, every time I come here, I ponder the meaning of life. And I was like, well, I'll tell you what, if it doesn't make sense here, it doesn't make sense. If somehow when, when all is gone and, and you don't have your physical health and you don't have your maybe even mental capacity at the level you did or whatever else, if it doesn't make sense at that point, then it didn't make sense. And so living a little life is, is actually a, a wonderful thing because Mary lived a little life and gave birth to a little life that made the difference for every life, brought meaning to all of them. Joseph, man, he's barely mentioned in the Bible. He makes a few cameo appearances and then whoop, what even happened to that guy? I don't know. Did he die? I guess. (laughs) It doesn't really say. Hmm. And so this is what it says. She pondered these things and she kept them in her heart. And again, that's what I'd say. The present is this. Be present in the present. But it, I don't, I'm not with everyone I wish I was. Heaven's when you'll be with everyone you wish you were. I don't get to be with everyone here. Mary didn't get to be with everyone here. Joseph didn't get to be with everyone here. So be present in the present. If you have some people in your life, celebrate them. And then you look at this. It says she kept it. And I love that because I say, be present in the present, but keep it for the future. You don't know why what's happening to you now will be needed later, but it will be. Again, I close with one little illustration. I loved video games growing up. Um, I still love them, but I just don't have, I'm no good at them anymore. Um, I play kids and they kill me and I don't like that. So, um, but if I can find the old retro games, I'm like, now we're talking, you know, like very pixelized little guy, you know, and stuff. And I know all the tricks. But one of the things in role-playing games is there's always little things along the way that you need that you don't understand why you need them in this level. 
But then you go to level three and you go, if I only had a hatchet. And you're like, you did in level two, but you went blowing past it. I don't need that. Too heavy. Don't want to carry it. And then you need the hatchet in level three and it's like, game over. And you go, game over. And you go back through and you go, I'm picking it up this time. And the thing is, if we could live our life 10,000 times like those movies have where you learn each time and you learn and you learn and you learn. Well, that's one thing. But one of the things that we have the wisdom of the ages for us, the reason we have the scriptures, one of the major reasons is that so we could learn from Mary's life. So we could learn from other people's life and go, pick it up in the present and hold on to it for the future. But don't live your whole life thinking about the future because you don't understand it. Of course you don't understand it. It's taxing, it's lonely, it's scary. It's great. And that is what I learned this year. Thank you, Lord, for all that you are, all that you do. I pray that we would have a merry little Christmas. And thank you for all the ways that in this simple story that we've heard a million times, uh, passed to me from my grandfather, my father, and I hope I'm passing it on to, to my kids and my friends, uh, that it's a story that is so simple, it's profound. And it can be understood by a child. And I pray that we would receive it as such. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.